بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شروع الله کے نام سے جو بڑا مہربان نہایت رحم والا ہے جب تلک ہے یہ جہاں ہے دعا میرے خدا ہمیں حسین رہے یہ آزاد رہے ہمیں حسین رہے یہ آزاد رہے جب تلک ہے یہ جہاں ہے دعا میرے خدا ہمیں حسین رہے یہ آزاد رہے ہمیں حسین رہے یہ آزاد رہے تیرے حضور دعا مانگتے ہیں اہلِ ازا قبول کر لے بہت انا لله وانا اليه راجعون وزادارو کی شفقت رکھی ہے تجھے تجھے ممبر دی ٹریجیڈی دیٹ فیل اپون امام حسین آن دی ڈے اف آشو وی ہیو اسپینٹ آل نائٹ ریممبرنگ امام حسین And we have spent all day doing the zikr and listening to the Masaib of Imam Hussain. <coughs> Many of us are tired now. And after a short period, we will go home to our houses. <laughs> we will go home to our warm beds. We will go home. And we will have some food, we will have some water. <laughs> But Mamanin, think about the women that have been left behind by Hussein. Do you think that after tonight they are going to go home? Do you think that they are going to get a warm bed? No, 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 no. After Imam Hussein was killed, the sister of Hussein was taken a prisoner to Shah. As a Zaro, even though we have been listening to the zikr of Ali Muhammad, we have been remembering the tragedies that fell upon Imam Hussein, Islam, Islam. We need to take that the tragedy that fell upon Imam Hussein, this battle that took place in Karbala, this battle was between Haqq and Batil. It was a battle of truth and falsehood. And the message for our youth, that from Karbala, there are six lessons which we need to learn. There is no purpose of us gathering here together if after today we forget who Hussein is. If after Hussein, today we don't remember what fell upon Imam Hussein and what was the reason why Imam Hussein went to Karbala. There are six lessons which we need to learn from Karbala. And the first lesson that we learn from Karbala is that we need to learn how to be patient. Imam Hussain taught us in Karbala, no matter how many tragedies fall upon you, no matter how much musibat comes on top of you, but still be patient. That's the first lesson that we need to learn from Karbala. The second we need to learn from Karbala is that always we need to speak the truth. Because it was because of this truth that Imam Hussein went to Karbala. It was because of Haq that Imam Hussein went to Karbala. The third lesson that we need to learn from Karbala is the kindness that the Imam showed towards his enemies. We see and that you have been listening 
that on the seventh of Muharram they cooked the water for Ali Muhammad. Whenever they got the chance to stop the Imam al Hussein. But did Imam al Hussein use any foul language? Did Imam al Hussein say anything in return? Imam al Hussein showed kindness to tell us no matter if somebody is doing wrong to you, you always do the right thing for them. And the fourth lesson that we learn from Karbala is the loyalty of the companions of Imam Hussein. As I mentioned the other day, that from all of the companions that the Holy Prophet of Islam had, from all the companions that the Amir al Mu'mineen had, Imam Hussein had the most loyal companions. So the fourth lesson that we need to take from Karbala is the loyalty of his companions. And the fifth we need to take is equality. Imam Hussain in Karbala treated everyone equally. And we need to learn this from the Sirat and from the Kirlar of Muslim Karbala. That if we want to be successful in this world, if we want to take something away on this day of Ashur, we need to learn that Imam Hussein treated everyone equally. And the sixth and final thing that we need to take from what happened in Karbala is that we need to learn to forgive. Because Imam Hussain even though who was that person that stopped the caravan of Imam Hussain? Who was that person that was on the opposition until the night of Ashur? But what did Imam Hussain teach us? Imam Hussain taught us that whenever a person realizes that he has done a mistake, forgive him. And this is what we learn from Karbala. And if we can understand these six lessons, if we can understand the forgiveness from Imam Hussain, if we can understand the loyalty of his companions, if we can understand his kindness, if we can understand his justice, if we can understand his bravery, if we can understand all these things, then we can move towards perfecting ourselves. Because I, as, as I have been continuing the topic from the first of Muhammad, that we want to move towards perfection. And the only way we can more move towards perfection is by actually implementing on the teachings of Imam Hussein. This is the message of Karbala. This is what we learn from Karbala. And if we learn this and we memorize this and we teach this to our children, then our children will be amongst those people that can hold their head up high and say that we believe in that Muslim Imam even though he gave everything for Allah Azrajal, he still taught us how to be loyal, he still taught us how to be equal, he taught us forgiveness, he taught us bravery and this is the Pegham, this is the message of Imam Hussain And as I said that we have been remembering Imam Hussain since we saw the moon of Muhammad. Every single person in his own way or form has been remembering Imam Hussain. And today is that day that even the angels of Allah are crying for Hussain. 124,000 prophets are crying for Hussein. All of the Imams to Imam Mahdi are crying for Hussein. Abed Imam Mahdi is sitting in Parda and and he's crying gladly saying to Allah, Oh Allah, give me permission so I can go and revenge the death of Hussein. <coughs> Abad Imam Mahdi is saying, oh Allah, give me the permission so I can go and revenge how the person treated 
ਸੈਯਦਾ ਸਕੀਨਾ ਅੱਲਾਹ ਗਿਵ ਮੀ ਪਰਮਿਸ਼ਨ ਸੋ ਆ ਕੈਨ ਗੋ ਹਸ ਦਟ ਪਰਸਨ ਹਾਊ ਡਿਡ ਯੂ ਟੇਕ ਦ ਈਰਿੰਗ ਫਰਮ ਦ ਈਅਰ ਆਫ ਸੈਯਦਾ ਸਕੀਨਾ the dara for us this night will end soon for us we will listen to shaab al gharib and we will return <laughs> but remember that these holy and pious women of imam hussein what will happen to them karbala has ended for imam hussein <laughs> but this musibah and this karbala has started for zaida as a dara it was very hard for imam hussein to give permission to his loyal companions it was very hard for imam hussein to give permission to his sons but as a dara when this day the day of ashur began it began with the azan of ali akbar <laughs> and since fajr started up to the time of asar Imam Hussein sallallahu alaihi wasallam was continuously giving qurbanis in the name of Allah. He was giving Ali Akbar for Allah. He was giving Ali Asghar for Allah. He was giving Ahmad Muhammad for Allah. He was giving Qasim for Allah. He was giving Habib for Allah. He was giving Zahir for Allah. All his companions one by one he was giving them for Allah azawajal Azadara finally that time came upon Imam Hussein when everyone had left him every single person that Imam Hussein held dear to him they had all gone they had all become shaheed azadara time came upon imam hussein when imam hussein was covered with injuries all over his body i read in the books of maktal that every single inch of the of imam hussein was covered in injuries blood was coming out of the blessed body of imam hussein imam hussein returned to the camps and he said is there anyone there to help me he said he came to the door of the tent and he said inna ma yurid allah he recited the ayat of the tahir it was famous among the arab that that person who needed something he would come to the door of ali muhammad and he would recite ayat at tahir imam hussein recited ayat at tahir sayyida zainab came to the door and she looked and she could not see anyone she returned back and again she heard the voice is there anyone there to help me sayyida sakina again goes to the door of the tent and she could not see anyone <laughs> Zainab of Islam says to Zainab, Oh Zainab, who are you looking for? Zainab says that I am hearing that someone is giving a sada and it sounds like my brother Hussain. <coughs> But whenever I go to the door, <coughs> I do not see anyone there. So Imam Hussain begins to cry and he says, Oh Zainab, I am not at the door of the tent, but I have come behind the tent because I am covered in so many injuries that I am scared when my four-year-old Sakina sees me. Sakina will die looking at me. When Sakina heard me, she said, Oh my father, come inside. I am the daughter of Hussain ibn Ali. My grandfather was Ali ibn Ali. When Imam Hussein comes inside, the women surround Imam Hussein. When they surround Imam Hussein, they begin to cry. When the Almighty was leading the Messiah of Imam Hussein, he says that whenever women would kiss Imam Hussein's body, blood would come out to their lips because the body of Hussein was covered in so many injuries. 
that there was no place for the children of Imam Hussein to kiss him. <laughs> Imam Hussein was covered in so many injuries that there was not even one place on his body that the children of Hussein could kiss him. Allah Sallallahu Imam Hussein got permission to leave. And the Naro just imagine that from all the men that came with Imam Hussein, excluding Imam Sajjad, Imam Hussein was the only person left for the women. Sayyidina Zainab looks at Imam Hussein and she says, Oh my brother Hussein, you are leaving today. Who are you leaving us to? Imam Hussein begins to cry and he says, Oh my sister Zainab, I am leaving you for Sajjad. Now it is up to you. And Sajjad, now it is up to Sajjad and the Bazaar of Shab. As a lot of Allah's Imam Hussain came close to his Zuljana. As a Naro just imagine this, uh, that all day Imam Hussain would come and help Abbas onto the horse. He would come and he would help Qasim onto the horse. He would come and he would help all of Muhammad onto the horse. He would come and he would help Ali Akbar onto the horse. Every single companion was mounted onto the horse by Imam Hussain. When Imam Hussain came close to the horse, it is written in the books of Maktal that Imam Hussain looks up towards the sky. He looks left and then he looks right. He looks forward and then he looks behind him. And then he says, Oh, is there anyone here that would mount Hussain onto the horse? There was no one there to mount Hussain on his horse. And then I read in the books of Maktal that Zainab comes close to Hussain and she puts her hand forward and she says, Oh my brother Hussain, don't worry if there is nobody here to help you. I Zainab have come to put you onto the horse. Eventually Imam Hussain he gets onto his horse and he makes the intention to go and find these kuffars. <laughs> he says to his horse, oh my horse, let's move. <laughs> and the horse is not moving. <laughs> and the Lord Imam Hussein says to his horse, I know that you have had no water for three days. I know that you have had no food for three days. Oh horse, if you are tired, then I will say will walk to the battlefield. <laughs> The horse probably looks at him on Hussein and he says, Oh my master Hussein, how can I move if you look towards my feet? Imam Hussein looks at the feet of the Lulina. He sees that there is a four-year-old child. She is holding the feet of the Lulina. And she is saying, Oh Lulina, I have seen that you have a ghost in the battlefield. Who knows which one of us will be alive for the Muharram of 2019? <laughs> Try to cry for Imam Hussein as much as you can because Imam Sajjad says that Allah has mercy upon that eye that cries for Imam Hussein. Think yourself lucky. There are people that are going about their worldly days, but we have left everything and we are sitting here remembering Imam Hussein. Allah Masa will read the Messiah of Imam Hussein. I just want to read how Imam Hussein got to the Matsalga. When Imam Hussein looked down and he saw Sakina, he gets off his horse 
Eventually, Imam Hussein arrives and he begins to fight this Kufbar. <laughs> Imam Hussein hears the voice <laughs> and the voice says, Oh my beloved, I am happy with you. Return toward your maker. And I know it is easy for me to read this. And it is easy for you to listen to this. But just imagine how they are. 